And here we are, back to the first month of quiet. I'm age 12 now, and just two in the last two months, we've experienced quite a bit of loss to the colony. Both our teacher and Tammy's dad. So I think I'm definitely going to want to work on my self-defense so that I can protect myself and maybe others when an attack happens again. Oh, Tangent. I'm sure she's not taking the news about Professor Howell well. Tangent is storming around the quad in front of engineering, checking notes on her holopam, gesturing and grunting in frustration. Ugh, this is the worst! What's the matter? I can't possibly... She says, her voice cracking. She seems too upset to even explain it. Professor Howell, she tries again. Howell, he was helping me with this physics chapter and now he's... She throws her hands in the air, a virtual holopam screen flying everywhere. I can't understand this without him. It's impossible, she chokes out. Why did he have to die? I'll try to give her a hug. Oh. She stiffens, then lets you hold her. She, You can feel her shaking. You think she might be crying, but when she finally pulls away, her eyes are dry. Thank you, Solana, she says. I know you're having a hard time with this as well. Nothing is easy on Bertumna. When the adults can't even protect themselves, it's obvious we're on our own out here. Tang nods going back to her notes. Thank you, she mumbles. I want to make sure everyone's okay. Um, I wonder what Mars has to say. Oh, medicinal root. That'll be good to have. My dads are so, so uncool, Mars complains. Mars, do your homework. Mars, you should help out more. Mars, we're going to cut off your allowance. She scoffs, as if, right? That money is mine. I earn it. With a toss of her hair over her shoulder, she seems above it all entirely. Doing what? Do we even have to ask? My presence in Levin's, this dreary colony. I'm their beloved daughter. They owe me. Not gonna lie, I think Mars is kind of a brat, but Cal is not, and that's why he's my best friend. Cal is lying in the scrub grass at the edge of the garden, staring up at the sky. He blinks at you as your shadow passes over him. Hey, Solana, he says, smiling around the stalk of grass between his teeth. He ever just take some time to appreciate this place? We got sky, clouds, and rain, and wind. After growing up on the strato, it all seems pretty magical. Yeah, it is beautiful here, but also dangerous. Your dad is engrossed with his work and analyzing a robust flowering vine with clusters of faintly growing beans. He hums and makes notes on his hollow palm. Oh, look who's here, he says, realizing with a jolt that you're standing there. I found something, I have found a really interesting plant. Cool. Your mom is hard at work. Um, Utopia. It's Utopia there now. You step cautiously through the colony dates. Solana, how's it going, little sis? Chief Severe Utopia casually steps casually out to bury your way while making it look accidental. Whoa there, I don't know if you're ready to head out there and join the surveyors just yet. Why don't you skedaddle and stick to sports ball inside the walls for now? She rubs her knuckles on your scalp and sends you on your way. Yeah, I, I think I'm gonna work on self-defense actually. You can hear Dave sniffing, finding him tucked into a leeward alcove in the walls. He stumbles to his feet when he sees you approach. 
What do you want? He scowls. Did Mars send you, Tang? I'm not going back. I'm not just going to do what people tell me. Okay. Um, hey, Anemone. You don't see Anemone. She sees you first. Tag! She exclaims, pouncing on you from behind. Hear it! You want to train together? On your way to the sports ball pitch, Anemone shares a story about the time her brother Calm once spiked the ball so hard that it broke Utopia's nose when she used to play sports ball too. She describes it in gory detail. But don't go all easy on me, she exclaims. That's why we have mid bays, right? Plus, I might get a cool scar. She thumbs a blue scaled scar on her jaw right under her ear. Um. I think after what's happened, I definitely want to work on defense. Part of self-defense is training your body so that it can be ready for any situation. Security Chief Brett has you running laps, jumping through tires, climbing walls, and sprinting back and forth. He has an inverted anti-gravity pad that makes your limbs feel super heavy. When you do jumping jacks on it then and then do them again on normal gravity, it feels like you could jump straight back up through the wormhole. It's exhausting. But it's not that different than sports ball training. It's fun. Is that Cal? This is great. It feels good that Rhett actually challenges your body, encourages you to achieve peak condition. Okay. Oh, Cal! And 17! And I got three stars! You've been having weird dreams as usual. They seem to get worse around Glow. You wake from a dream that has tears drying on your face, though you can't remember why, just that you're, you were terrified. Whatever it was, it felt real enough that for a moment you just lie in bed with your eyes closed and try to calm your breathing. You literally rub your eyes and... Surprise! Oh, it's your birthday. Your dad leaps onto your bed and gives you a big cuddle. Happy bitter... Happy... <laughs> what was that? Happy birthday, my little tomato head. Twelve years old. Wow, can you believe it? No. You... <gasps> That's really pretty. No, your mom answers for you, laughing as she hands you your presents. It was just yesterday, Antecedent was showing me how to change your diaper. Because it's your birthday, your parents have brought in food from a canteen so you can all eat together on your bed. As you stuff your face with savory tofu chunks, you open your presents. Which one is your favorite? A bouquet of exotic flowers from mom? Oh! <laughs> a stuffed xenophon from your dad? A photo honer from your best friend. I don't know what it is. Um, that's so pretty. Those cost a lot. I feel like my favorite would be this. <laughs> I taught the Nana printer the pattern based off the pictures from Expeditions, your dad says, watching you play with it. They call it a Spectraptor, he continues. See, it looks like it's wearing glasses on top of its five eyes. They s said that because its lenses are outside of its eyeballs? Isn't that wild? Nothing like it on Earth. Your dad clears away the wrapping paper and the dishes from breakfast. Your mom folds her hands on the table and gives you a serious look. Uh-oh. So, she says, we've been here two years now. I know your dad and I always said you're in charge of your schedule, but we've been keeping an eye on you. A loving eye, your dad interjects, stuffing wrapping paper into the recycler pickup bin. A trusting, gentle eye. Yeah, and I've been trying to do a balance of mix up like several things. Professor Hal used to tell us uh, all the time about how hard you're trying in school, your mom continues. That's great. Your dad and I are really proud of you. 
Working might seem fun and grown up when you're a kid, but if you want to do more manual labor, you'll need some book smarts too. Your dad joins you again, so it's time to start thinking about how you're going to contribute to the colony when you're older. At the look on your face, he laughs. Don't worry, we're not going to make you get a job right now. We, we're just asking. What do you want to be when you grow up? A farmer like you two? Uh, a teacher like Professor Howe? Uh, I, don't, I don't know about 10 kids. Um, Hmm. Maybe a teacher like Professor Hal. Your mom smiles sadly. I'm sure he would have loved to hear that, she says. The colony will need someone as passionate about teaching as he was. Well, your mom starts to get up. I'm sure your friends all want to wish you a happy birthday. She stops and snaps her fingers. Oh, you might not have considered a career as a depot clerk, but... Al and Bernie mentioned their daughter Mars is working there, and she needs some help. Now that people can fairly order luxuries, it's been pretty busy. Sure beats shoveling dirt, your dad laughs. If you don't take a, that job, you tell Mars I'll be right there. <laughs> your mom rolls her eyes and smiles. And now it's mid-quiet. Uh, hey, Anemone. A sports ball goes sailing over your forehead. Four! Anemone giggles and jogs up to you. That's what they used to say on Earth when a ball would go into the crowd. I like it. I, I think that's like a golf thing, but okay. Don't, Tang says as soon as you open your mouth to speak. She holds up one scolding finger. I'm about to make a breakthrough. Don't interrupt me unless it's serious. Okay. I'll leave you to it. Uh, hey, Dees. Dees is almost completely ignores you in favor of playing a game on his hollow pad. Just one, he mutters, then cusses and stomps his feet as the game lets out a cheery whistle of defeat. Stupid game, Dees hisses. It looks like he'd throw the game away if it wasn't literally attached to his hand. Um, where's Cal? Hi, Cal. The sound of hammering rings through the garden, and you find Cal helping your mom build a row of raised garden beds. Turns out some of the earth plants don't grow so great here, so we're gonna see if this helps, he says, taking a break to rub his face. Your mom stifles a laugh at the smear of dirt it leaves across his cheeks. Your mom says we gotta worry about the nitrogen levels soon, he continues, but that hope, but that hopefully will be eating just plants we grow here before then. Uh, yeah. <laughs> What's that? Is that? No, I don't see anything. That's not something to collect. Um, I'm still really close to getting my empathy up, so I want to try to do that. You're running late for humanities class. When you arrive, everyone is gathered in the bean bags around the room's big hollow projector. Chip's computer congruence is displayed on it. She's giving today's lesson, reading an old book of earth poetry. You sit down next to Tang and nudge her and motion, what's up with this? Tang frowns at you. You missed the announcement, she whispers. Because Professor Hal died, congruence will be teaching this class from now on. Then she frowns at everything in general. They said everyone else who might be qualified is too busy. And no, they didn't ask me. I miss Professor Hal. You try to keep your voice down, but congruence literally has ears everywhere. I miss Professor Hal as well, she says, her monitor swinging over to you. He was a very special human. Wait, you ask out loud, congruence can like people? Of course I can like people, she replies. There's humor in her not a voice. I carried you inside of me for 20 years after all. How could I not get attached? Oh. Um, one, two, 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 five, and eighteen. And now 
It's the last month of quiet. Uh, we're still so close to getting our empathy up, but we're not quite there yet. I don't do playing, Tang says, watching Anemone and some of, of the smaller children tear through the colony, chasing after a sports ball. Why would I put effort into chasing around a dumb ball, getting sweaty and tired for fun? She shudders. I would rather spend my time doing something important. Hey, Anemone. You... Okay, she wants to play tag. Um, hey, Deese. Deese is scrolling through a novel on his hollow palm, completely checked out of the world around him. He sorrows when you tap his shoulder. Jeez, Solana! He grumbles and gestures to close his novel. You catch a few lines about a dragon before the screen disappears. Deese flips up his collar and turns away. Can't you tell when someone is busy? Um, oh, okay. Um... I'll go find someone else to talk to and look for any collectibles, perhaps? Well, nothing up here. I guess I guess we can end see what Mars has to say. Oh, hey, Solana, Mars says, breezing past you. I'm sorry, I can't talk right now. I'm on my way to work in command. She stops when you don't sound amazed enough. You know, the supply depot, she clarified. It's the most important job in the whole colony. Anything that gets made here goes through me first. Mars' smug smile gets somehow even more smug. Plus, I'll get the first pick of the best stuff. Uh, you lay it on really thick. How Mars is just so cool. How everything she does is totally great. How she's obviously the most important person in the colony. You going to start a Mars fan club in her honor. She just laughs. Nice try, Solana, but thanks for the compliments. Then she just leaves without even offering to help to get you a job. Drat. Sucking up to Mars didn't work. What? Next, having to actually ask for what you want? Ugh. Maybe you could ask again later. Well, I'm not sure how interested I am in that, though. So, um, I'll talk to Cal. Cal has collected a fine assortment of plastic and metal containers and assembled them into what passes for a drum set, and his clattering away at them echoes through the garden. When he sees you, he trolls his drumstick and gives you a cheeky smile. Hey, they were just going to get nails recycled anyways. Well, it's fun. And it kind of reminds me, making music is sort of like the poetry that we learn in Humanities. Oh, boy. You should have known better, Tangent, you hear as you walk past the laboratory. Curious, you listen at the door. Chief Engineer Instant sighs. I know you meant well, but your presumption has cost us three months of work. You can't simply look at an experiment and change the parameters to your liking. Getting results is not the same as doing good science. Your findings, however, scientifically interesting, are useless to us without sound methodological underpinnings. Tang's response is more subdued than you'd have ever heard her before. I'm sorry, Chief Engineer, she mumbles, looking down at the floor. I recognize the error of my ways. I should hope so, Instance replies, pinching the bridge of her nose in her fingers. I'll expect you in the lab first thing tomorrow morning, and I will personally supervise your work in resetting the experiment. You flatten against the wall as Instance breezes past you, barely giving you a second to look as she strides down the hallway. You poke her head up inside the laboratory, aware Tang scowls and wipes her eyes. What do you want? What were you working on? Tal sighs and rubs her eyes harder. Something I've been working on with the chief engineer instance, she replies. I'm not supposed to talk about it, and I don't want to talk about it. Losing the data was my fault, Tank continues. I wanted to prove I'm not the little kid from biology class, that I'm ready to work hard and really make great discoveries. Dr. Instance has always been there for me. When I was a kid, and now, with my mother gone, she's the only adult in the colony who sees what I could become, she says. She believes that I could be better than what I am. It's always been that way. I just, I really want to impress her. You will. Hmm. 
Tang hums in agreement. I certainly hope so. Um, I guess one, two, two, four. Nope. And 16, just barely. It's pollen season. <laughs> 